This is Professor Pelton. This is part three of chapter eight, section three. So now we're going to get into where we start mixing inverses, inverse trig functions and non uh, regular trig functions. What's important is when you look at these um, is what is the inside? Because when you do these, the order of operations is imperative. Well, it's imperative always in math, but paying attention to that here is even more imperative because what's in the inside happens first in the order of operations, right? So we have to remember, based on our initial discussion of inverses in sections one and two, is that sine and cosine are just waves that go infinitely in both directions. So you can plug in any angle you want. But the inverses, we had to limit the domains of the functions, thus the ranges of the inverses to make them work. So whatever's on the inside could have uh, negative ramifications. Okay, so you have to pay attention to that first. So if I do these ones down here, okay, what you'll notice, let me see if I can get these into, into view here. There we go is the 0 0.6, that is absolutely fine because that falls within the range, okay, of here. So in fact, these will cancel each other and leave you with 0 0.6. So that is perfect, like one cancels the other, okay? And that's what happens or should happen when the, when the trig function is in the inside, okay? If the regular function is in the inside and the, and the trig is on the outside, you're going to have to calculate the trig function first, right? So at 3 pi over 2, if I do a little unit circle right here, right, that's all the way over to here, right? That's 3 pi over 2, and look at the unit circle. That coordinate is 0, 1, cosine, sine. So this gives me sine inverse of 1 over 1, right? because that is the sine value that's there. Okay, now we do the, do the inverse sine, which is an angle, right? So if I think about this, the sine inverse is limited to pi over two to negative pi over two, right? So in order to get a, um, I'm sorry, that's a negative one, right? I apologize, I'm not thinking. So that's a negative one, right? Okay, so I'm uh, restricted to pi over two to uh, negative pi over two So for the sine inverse. So the only place I can get negative one is if I go to here, to this coordinate, which is zero, negative one. So that angle is negative 90 degrees, right? So it's negative 90 degrees. Or negative pi over two. Either way, gets us to the same place, okay? All right, so the next one, the inverse is in the inside, but again, that is not within the domain of what I'm supposed to have. So 1.5 is not a member of negative one to one. So this is undefined, you can't do it, All right? So if the inverse is inside, you can either do it or you're not, and they cancel. If the trig function is inside, you have to calculate the trig function first. All right, pause the video, try the next three for yourself. Okay, so this one, it's between the negative one to one for cosine, so you're good there, so it's just 0 0.7, okay? Uh, sine of pi is in the inside, so if I go to pi, that's pi, that coordinate is negative one, zero, right? Cosine, sine. So the sine value is zero. So sine inverse of negative one, I get zero, okay? So if I do sine, the I'm stuck between pi over two and negative pi over two, correct? So I'm somewhere in here. So the question, where is sine zero? Well, if I go to here, that coordinate is one comma zero, right? So the sine value is zero there. So that's at zero degrees, right? Or zero radians, depending on what you want to say. Because again, the inverse function gives us an angle. So this one is undefined, right? Okay, because um, negative 1.2 is not a member of between negative one and one. Okay, 
And keep in mind, uh, that's the same for sine too, not between negative one and one, if the uh, inverse is in between. Okay, so let's say we mix it up and we have different trig functions. So I'm gonna put sine with cosine. So in this case, I'm gonna put the, in these ones, I'm going to put the trig function on the inside and the inverse on the outside, right? And on the next page, we'll do the reverse. We'll put the inverse on the inside and the trig function on the outside. So if the trig function is in the inside, you need to calculate that first. Okay, so I'm going to draw a unit circle, and I'm going to go around 390 degrees. So 360 plus 30 more, so I end up right there with 30 degrees, right? Because I went 303, so because 360 plus 30, right, is 390, because they believed you know, it was 360 days in a year, so they thought 360 was all the way around, right? So that coordinate is root 3 over 2 comma 1 half, right? Cosine, sine. So we want the cosine, so that's root 3 over 2. So sine inverse of root 3 over 2. So the question is, since it's inverse, what is the angle, right? What is the angle? So the angle, right, um, what gives us root 3 over 2? Okay, so again, if I do sine inverse, I'm trapped between pi over 2 in negative pi over two. So it must be in the first quadrant. So I'm up here at 60 degrees, although it should go right there, right? Which is um, one half comma root three over two, right? Cosine sine. So that's um, 60 degrees or pi over three radians, depending on how you wanna look at that. All right, pause the video, try the student problem for yourself. Okay, so if there is a trig function on the inside and the inverse on the outside, again, order of operations, do the inside first, which is the trig function. So negative 495 degrees means I need to go all the way around 360 and plus some more. So let me think here. So negative 495, take away 360. So that's five, three, negative 135. So this is negative 135, right? So that gives me this coordinate right here, which is negative root two over two and negative root two over two. Right, that's what that coordinate is. So in fact, I get the angle of some cosine inverse equals negative root two over two, okay? Because that's where I ended up. All right, so if I do cosine inverse, that means I'm stuck between zero and pi for cosine, right? Because cosine is different than sine, right? So I'm somewhere in, I cannot be down here. So this is the positive positive quadrant and the negative positive quadrant. So if I'm negative root two over two, I must be over in this quadrant over here, right? So this quadrant is negative root two over two, comma root two over two, cosine sine. And this angle to get there is in fact 135 degrees. And again, you can check the unit circle. So the angle is 135 degrees, which is also three pi over four, right? As you think about it, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths get me there and four fourths would be a pi, right? Okay, let's go to the last page. Okay, so they notice before we go to the next page that these ones had the trig function on the inside, the inverses on the outside. The next page is reversed. So I have the tr inverse in the inside and the trig function on the outside, okay? So the inverse, so those are in fact the ratios of two sides, five to 12, right? So if a tangent is opposite over adjacent, correct? So if I did the Pythagorean theorem, right? The hypotenuse, uh, squared would be the a squared plus uh, b squared, correct? So h would be the square root of 25 plus 144, right? So h would be the square root of 169, right? So h would be 13, which is what we got, correct? All right. So in fact, if we were going to, if we're going to do the cosine, the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I get 12 over 13, right? Because the cosine is going to give us, so a cosine of an, because again, this is an angle, right? An inverse trig function gives me an angle, 
correct? Because innermost first has to happen. So a cosine of an angle or a trig function of an angle gives me a ratio of two sides. Okay. All right, pause the video and try the student problem for yourself. Okay, so if I'm doing the tangent inverse, that is the ratio of two sides, okay? So I'm gonna make a triangle, and that'll be my angle. So tangent um, is opposite over adjacent, okay? So if I do the Pythagorean theorem, the uh, radius, oh boy, sorry, radius squared equals a squared plus b squared, right? So r equals the square root of 9 plus 16, r equals the square root of 25, so r equals 5, correct? Okay, so again, you plug in ratios of sides into inverse tangents or inverse trig, and so this is an angle, correct? So a trig function of an angle, right, is the ratio of sides. So if I'm doing sine, I'm going to get opposite over hypotenuse, okay? All right, let's try one more. Okay, so we could have negative ones, which is fine. You just have to remember if the inverse is in the inside, you have limitations. The trig functions don't, because the sine and cosine waves go on forever, but the inverses do, because sine inverse is trapped between pi over two and negative pi over two, correct? So you have the positive positive quadrant and the neg uh, positive negative quadrant. So if it's a negative, it must fall into the fourth quadrant, right? So if I make my triangle, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, correct? One of those needs to be negative, so the hypotenuse can never be negative, but one of the sides can. So down is negative, right? To the right is going to be positive. So the missing x has to be a positive answer because it's going to the right. The y value going down, right, that has to be negative because it's going down. So if I do my Pythagorean theorem now, um, the hypotenuse equals the legs squared, correct? So 9 equals 1 plus x squared. So 8 equals x squared. So the square root of 8 equals x, which is 2, 2, 2, 2, right? 3 twos make 8. So that's 2 root 2 equals x. So that is 2 root 2. Okay, so again, the ratio of sides, so the inverse of ratio of sides will give you an angle. So that is an angle, right? So the cotangent of an angle gives you, right, a trig function of an angle gives you a ratio of sides. So cotangent, <coughs> excuse me, is adjacent over opposite. You could simplify that if you want to, but it's not really necessary. Okay, pause the video, try a student problem for yourself. Okay, so cosine, remember, goes from zero um, to pi, right? So you can't be down here, you can't be down here, right? And this is the positive positive quadrant. This is the, um, <coughs> excuse me, negative positive quadrant, right? So therefore, I must be in the second quadrant, right? Um, so I have to have a triangle over here, correct? And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So either the one is negative or the two is negative. Well, the radius or the hypotenuse is never negative. So it must be the x value because it's going to the left. So that means the y value is in fact positive, correct? So if I do the Pythagorean theorem, two squared equals y squared plus negative one squared. So four equals y squared plus one. y squared equals three or root three equals y. And again, these are in fact plus and minus, right? <coughs> Whenever you do a even root. But in this case, the y can only be positive because it's going up. The x is negative. So in some cases, you might have to actually use the negative answer. Okay, so this is a positive root three because it's going up. So I want sine, right? 
All right, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So, right? Yes, sine. So opposite over hypotenuse. And again, I'm using this angle right here for my relative in the triangle that I draw. Okay, that is the end of part three.